Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shog Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed of Oman on his country's national day. His Majesty the King hailed the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and wished the Omani leader abundant health and happiness and his brotherly people further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on his country's national day. His Majesty the King wished the Moroccan leader abundant health and happiness and his brotherly people further progress and prosperity, hailing the strong relations binding the two countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed on the occasion of Oman's National Day. His Royal Highness expressed good wishes for Sultan Qaboos and wished him abundant health and happiness and for the Omani people further progress and prosperity. He affirmed the bilateral deep-rooted ties and stressed keenness to further enhance these ties. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to Deputy Premier for Cabinet Affairs, Fahad bin Mahmoud al Saeed, on his national occasion. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI on the occasion of Morocco's Independence Day. His Royal Highness expressed good wishes to the Moroccan King and wished him abundant health and happiness, and for the Omani people further progress and prosperity. He affirmed the bilateral deep-rooted ties and stressed keenness to further enhance these ties. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to the Moroccan Prime Minister, Saad al-Din Uthmani, on this national occasion. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed on the occasion of Oman's National Day. His Royal Highness expressed good wishes for Sultan Qaboos and wished him abundant health and happiness and for the Omani people further progress and prosperity. He affirmed the bilateral deep-rooted ties and stressed keenness to further enhance these ties. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to Deputy Premier for Cabinet Affairs, Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Saeed, on this national occasion. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, also sent cables of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco on his country's National Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince hailed the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and wished the Omani leader abundant health and happiness and his brotherly people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince sent similar cables to the Moroccan Crown Prince Mawlai Al Hassan and the Prime Minister Saad al-Din Uthmani. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in the Bahrain Post Open Water Swimming Championship, which was held in Bahrain Bay. The 1.9 kilometer event featured a broad participation by elite athletes who were gearing up for the forthcoming Ironman 70.3 Middle East Championship Bahrain, which will be held on November 25, 2017. The course of the Bahrain Post Open Waters Championship equals the one designed for the swimming contest of the Ironman Championship Bahrain, giving the participating athletes the opportunity to test their preparations ahead of the internationally recognized event. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed the importance of participating in the Ironman Championship, which will, be, which will feature a large number of prominent athletes in the sport, noting that the presence in such international events gives many technical advantages and increases the experience and possibility, as well as being an opportunity to achieve many continuous successes. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said the championship is a great opportunity to show the technical potential of the Bahrain Triathlon team members, considering its huge competitiveness. His Highness Sheikh Nasser pointed out that the Bahraini team's participation in the post-swimming championships is a chance to identify the physical and technical capabilities of the players before entering the triathlon.
upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to revamp the houses which were damaged due to the terrorist oil pipeline blast which happened near the village of Buri. Works Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning Minister Azam Khalaf gave directives to fast-track work to enable the owners to return to their houses soon. He said the contractors have started the maintenance of a number of houses after assessing the damages which resulted from the terrorist pipeline explosion. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended part of the 9th edition of the Brave International Combat Week at the Khalifa Sports City. His Highness Sheikh Nasser followed part of the 15 bouts, which witnessed a strong competition among fighters to win the title. His Highness expressed his admiration of the fighters' high performance levels. Upon his arrival, His Highness Sheikh Nasser was welcomed by His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, IMMAF President Kareth Brown, IMMAF Chief Executive Densign White, and the Assistant Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdurrahman Sadiq Asghar. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation and Chairman of the Higher Organizing Committee for the Brave International Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirmed that today is a historic day in the tournament, especially since all final bouts for all weight divisions will be held to determine the champion of amateur mixed martial arts. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed hope that Bahrain's team fighters Hamza Mohammedov and Murtada Talha would win the title, pointing out to the fighters' strength, technical and physical skills. His Highness said that the Bahraini version of the championship has proven to be the best in all respects, with its distinguished levels presented by fighters from around the world and attended by a selected selection of world champions. Sheikh Khalid affirmed the development of the mixed martial arts sports thanks to the work of all international federations and fighters who exert great efforts to develop their technical and physical levels and congratulated all the winners. A number of their Highnesses, senior officials and ambassadors attended the championship. Yesterday's competitions were attended by the sons of His Highness Sheikh Khalid, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa.
For the third time in the kingdom, Brave Combat Federation brings 30 professional fighters competing in various weights and categories, crossing different countries under one roof, to compete in the biggest week in the history of MMA. These are the best fighters in the whole of Middle East and uh, at a global level. We scouted the best of the best fighters and the upcoming fighters that's there out there. And uh, you see the quality, you see some of the best showcase of talent here. Uh, so far we had one decision and everything else has been knockouts. So that shows that these are the toughest fighters that's here. And we're excited to see not only that the, sh the, the place is houseful, but on top of that we see the excitement of Bahrain for this event. But what we also see is these fighters are putting on a great show. They flew all the way from South Africa to USA to Brazil, but these guys are putting on their best and their heart out, and well, we see the result. The fans are excited, we are excited. This is the future right now, and you see the crowd going crazy. When we had the first Brave 1 and Brave 2, you, we didn't see this kind of excitement, this kind of support, and now you see there's no more space. We are overbooked, and we have still people lined up outside to get inside. So this is already the future, and I think we have taken it to the uh, top level of mixed martial arts right now in one year's time and it cannot happen, it cannot go wrong when you have a support of His Highness Sheikh Khalid, the way he's supporting, the whole week with every single athlete supporting them A to Z. And you see the athletes giving their heart out. It's not just for the brave event, it's for the platform His Highness has put, not just for Bahrainis, he has built a platform for the whole of the world in the sport of mixed martial arts. And that's amazing. The Khalifa Sports City Arena was the stage for another historical milestone for Brave Combat Federation. Bahrain's Hamzel Kohiji lives up to his nickname Bahrain's Pride by emerging a victor of the cage and winning against his Indian rival, scoring a new record and honoring his country. I'd like to dedicate my one for His Highness Sheikh Khalid, who has been always helping me to achieve my dreams, who has been helping the MMA world in Bahrain and in the Middle East and to all the Bahraini crowd who came here to support me and who couldn't be able to, be, to come here. The arena saw a massive inflow of fans, MMA icons and world celebrities all present to witness and experience the action, excitement and entertainment of all 15 fights. Very, very exciting. The people, the atmosphere, the fight, absolutely extraordinary. And some quick bouts, some quick knockouts and uh, a lot of talent. I think the uh, level of organization is absolutely international and so are the fights. I mean, some great fighters, but uh, like I said, great knockouts, a lot of great speed and strength. So I think uh, one of the finest leagues uh, one could see anywhere. So I think His Highness Sheikh uh, Khalid has done an unbelievable job. His passion, I think, is what drives the entire uh, show. And with all the legends sitting around, I think you can't get better. Well, so far there's been some great fights, a lot of action, uh, the level has been high and I'm looking forward for the rest of the fight. So, but as, uh, as the fight has been going, it's looking very, very good. Good event. I see a lot of potential of MMA growing in the region. Brave 9 has grown to become a global phenomenon, placing the kingdom in the map and providing a stepping stone for the sport to be represented in the region. A long way from where it started, Brave Combat Federation is back to the kingdom and making history with its biggest and best fight card ever promoted in the Middle East. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasin Ibrahim. In celebration of the 47th National Day of the Sultanate of Amman, a ceremony was held in Sarmal in cooperation with the Amani Embassy today. More on this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Since today marks the 47th Omani National Day, a great ceremony was held in Sarmal today, celebrating the occasion in the presence of delegates of the Omani community and others willing to share with them their special day, reflecting the mutual love and respect between the two countries. Everybody in this day, National Day of Oman, everybody is happy and uh, glad to celebrate for uh, Oman National Day. I am very happy that the celebration is, is held in Sarmol, which is in my area. So, as you know, Bahrainis and Omanis, we have old relationship, and we know each other a long time ago. So we are very proud that this is held. 
It was a very cheerful celebration with a big cake simulating the Armani flag, Armani music playing, local Armani food, people proudly wearing Armani national costumes and others waving Armani flags. Bahraini Omani relations is beautiful. They are like uh, we, there is no difference between Oman and uh, Bahrain. They are, you know, we feel the warmness, uh, they feel the kindness from uh, two nations, and it's just amazing. They are both uh, the people are nice, and they have a lot of relation, and almost the culture is same. I am from Bahrain, but I have a home in uh, Oman. Also, my mother and grandmother and father and grandfather is there on Oman. My mother is Omani. Uh, I love Oman so much. I am crazy and I go there. Uh, I am so loved there. Lots of interesting activities attracted different age groups, such as a drawn tickets to Oman and much more prizes. I won a ticket for Oman, uh, a return ticket. I'm very happy, it's great. I will be able to visit Oman with my family, my wife and my three children and we will probably go there in December. It's a deep-rooted, friendly relationship between the two peoples, strengthening joint cooperation and issues of mutual interest between the two countries. A great celebration for the Omani National Day here in Bahrain, reflecting the historic, deep relationship between the two countries. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffour. Sheikh Sultan bin Ishaim Al Thani told tens of thousands of people gathered at the meeting of the tribes of Kahtan on the Saudi Qatari border that Doha must be purged and rescued before it is swallowed up by chaos and manipulated by corruptors. Bin Ishaim stressed the responsibility upon the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, to ensure Qatar doesn't be a country that harbors terrorism or become a shelter for corruption. He added that his silence during the last period is not about weakness or lack of power, but the hope that his brothers would regain their consciousness and abandon their misguided ways, asserting that his patience has reached its end. Sultan bin Ishaim emphasized that his country is not a resort for mercenaries.